Greetings, my name is Steven. I'm a certified comedic yoga instructor, a certified meditation teacher, and a yoga therapist. Today, we're going to talk about the ancient Egyptian gods, better known as the Netaru, and their connections to human nature, mother nature, and the cosmos, the cosmology aspect of things. Before we get going, make sure you like and subscribe and share these videos with others so we can continue to bring in information about comedic yoga, comedic philosophies, and wellness um, aspects of things overall. All right. So let's look at into the ancient Egyptian gods, again better known as the Netaru. The Netarus are a group of gods that are based in ancient Egypt, also known as Kemet, and each Netaru has a very unique characteristic about them. Not only based on how they look, but based on their different powers or uh, some of the things that they are the deity or the god of. And what's very unique and interesting about each Netaru is that their physical characteristic as well as their powers or the uh, elements that they're connected to all has to do with human nature, mother nature, and the cosmos, dealing with the stars and the planets, etc. So this is a result of a spiritual practice that was created based on the environment and based on how a person is feeling, based on the human experience. So a lot of people will say that the ancient Egyptian religion was mythological and there was some mystery to it but actually there wasn't much mystery to it at all it was pretty straightforward but it just takes a moment for us to really look deeper into each Netaru and what they are about so understanding the Netaru and how they were created it's understanding that the people who created the Netaru were creating this spiritual practice based on their environment, being present with their environment, but also being present with the human experience as individuals and as a people. So we're going to look into each Netaru, or we're going to look into a few Netaru, not each one because there's so many, but we're going to look into various Netarus and their connections to mother nature, human nature, and the characteristics of the stars, as well as the sun, and just the cosmos overall. So let's look into some of the more well-known Netarus. The first one we're going to look into is Asar. Asar is considered to be the ruler of the underworld. The underworld is actually the spiritual world. So that's what is meant by the underworld, the spiritual world. And Asar is typically seen as a mummified being and he has green skin and sometimes his skin is, is black as well. And Asar has a human face, mummified body with a white crown on his head, the white crown of Upper Egypt. What's interesting about Asar is what he represents. He represents rebirth, but he also is connected to agriculture, he's connected to vegetation, and he has a connection to also various plants as well, hence the color of his skin being green. And the color of his skin being black which you might see in certain papyrus as well as statues. The reason why his skin color is black is because black is a color of fertility, which is another characteristic of Asar. 
black being a color of fertility because when the soil was very dark that means that the soil was very rich in nutrients and it was able to grow crops so they associated growing crops they associated vegetation they associated being able to feed the nation feed themselves they associated that with a sar and the mummified body of a sar uh, showing his divinity but it also is connected to the story of Asar which we'll get into in another video. The next Netaru that we're going to look into is Aset who's also known as Isis which is her Greek name. Her ancient Egyptian name is Aset and Aset is seen with a human face, human body but the characteristics of Aset she's seen with two types of headdresses or crown the main one that we typically see is the throne which is on top of her head the other headdress that we see is her with a cow's horn and a sun disc in the middle of the horns and so the two characteristics that we see of our set has to do with the other characteristics that makes her so important in Kemet. Aset is associated with motherhood. Aset is associated with fertility. Aset is associated with rebirth. And Aset is also associated with power, which is why she has a throne on the top of her head. Because due to the divine feminine energy, one is able to attain the throne and this all has to do with the human characteristics of things but Aset is also a mother and she had a child through an immaculate conception after mummifying the body of Asar who we previously talked about and through, so after she mummified the body of Asar she was able to have this child. So Aset is showing that through a divine feminine energy we are able to create new life and come into power. And the cow's uh, characteristics, the bull's horn, the sun disc also has to do with motherhood. Because the cow was a very sacred animal showing the importance of motherhood in the everyday living, especially dealing with agriculture out there in the world. The next Netaru that we're going to look at is Horu. His Greek name is Horus. Now Horu, who many of us have seen before, has a falcon head and a human body. And Horu is also associated with the eye of Haru. The reason why they chose the falcon to represent Haru because the falcon was seen as an animal that was a great hunter and it was an animal that was an excellent uh, in terms of uh, vision and it was excellent at flying. One of the characteristics or the many characteristics of the falcon one, the falcon flies the highest out of any flying animal. Also, a falcon has incredible eyesight. It can see miles away, miles ahead of it, and that's why it's such an excellent predator and it can hunt very well. Also, a falcon is one of the fastest animals on the planet. And another great thing about a falcon is that a falcon can look directly into the sun and not be blinded by it because it has a special layer over its eye that almost works as a, somewhat of a sunglasses or, or visor, right, over its eye. And the efficiency of how a falcon can fly very high and then swoop down to come after its prey it was so fascinating because of how excellent its eyesight and how excellent the timing was of the falcon. They saw this as something divine and they associated with Haru. And they saw this as 
being uh, so this characteristic as a way to connect with human nature and how one can have excellent sight of what lies ahead of them on their path and their journey in life and they're able to achieve all the things they need to achieve through that vision and being able to see the light being able to see through the light and move through all the obstacles and achieve greatness and that's why Haru especially him being associated with a falcon was so important so there are many other Neturus that have these great characteristics but I wanted to touch on those three for now because they're the three main Neturus that we see in ancient Egyptian mythology um, and the spiritual practice that has a very important connections to human nature as well as the cosmos and as well as uh, mother nature purpose of all this is to show that a spiritual practice that was created and has been able to influence so many other civilization and even society today the reason why that spiritual practice was so influential was simply because the people who created it was connected to their environment and most importantly connected to themselves so in order for us to achieve this same greatness we must find that connection to ourselves as well as our surroundings and maintain this connection and through that we can build something very great see you soon